For centuries, Tsars ruled Russia, which was a much larger country than it is today. However, the Tsars of Russia cared little for their people. While the Tsars lived in lap of luxury, Russian people suffered from poverty. A devastating famine had taken the lives of many Russians, and working conditions in factories were miserable. Moreover, most of Russia's resources were spent on financing the unsuccessful war with Japan, while peaceful protesters were shot and killed. After several demonstrations in 1905, and after unsuccessful attempts at stifling the protests, Tsar Nicholas II, finally compromised and agreed to establish a parliament called the Duma, but the Duma had limited power, and the situation in Russia did not improve much, in fact, Russia became a complete wreck in the aftermath of the First World War. While all this happened in Russia, there was one man, Vladimir Lenin, who watched everything unfolded from miles away. Lenin was born Vladimir Ilya Julianov in 1870 in Simbirsk. He came from a well-educated family, who were all against the Tsars. While Lenin was studying law, his brother, who was a member of a revolutionary society, was executed, and he was also expelled from university for his beliefs. Lenin gradually became interested in Marxism, and published his writings on the subject, which were immediately banned. He was declared an enemy of the state, and exiled to Siberia. Lenin continued to work on his Marxism-Leninism views, and later, formed the Bolsheviks. As tensions grew in Russia, he fled the country and spent 15 years in a self-imposed exile, adopting the pseudonym Lenin. Lenin believed that capitalism was harmful for the overall benefit of the society, and that the working class should be the one with ultimate power. The event that finally enabled Lenin to return back to Russia was the revolution in 1917, where millions of people protested against the Tsarist Empire. When Nicholas II finally gave up the throne, the monarchy officially ended, and Russia came under the command of the provisional government. However, Lenin and the Bolsheviks were not satisfied with the provisional government's opposition to violent social reform, and continued involvement in the First World War. Lenin secretly organized a volunteer paramilitary force named Red Guards, consisting of factory workers, peasants and soldiers. The Red Guards managed to overthrow the provisional government in a coup d'etat, and the Soviet government was officially established under Lenin's rule. Lenin came to power with the promise of bread, land, and peace, and he wanted to end Russia's involvement in the First World War, but it was not possible to do so without making major compromises. Lenin and the Bolsheviks had no choice but to sign the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk in 1918 to end the war, but the treaty was disastrous for Russia. Poland, Finland, Estonia and Lithuania were given nominal independence under German protection, causing the country to lose a major part of its land and resources. Moreover, with the end of an international war, civil war began in Russia. The Red Army, backed by Lenin's newly formed Russian Communist Party, fought the White Army, which consisted of monarchists and capitalists. Lenin's policies ensured his win in the civil war, but left the country in a devastated state. Lenin, feeling that the integrity of the Soviet government was in danger, did everything he could, including establishing secret Russian police named Chika, to remove his opponents. Finally, in 1922, a treaty between Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, formed the Union of Soviet Republics also known as USSR. In 1924, Lenin died after suffering a series of strokes that left him unable to speak or move. Lenin's insistence on destruction of his opponents, paved the way for the rise of Joseph Stalin's dictatorship, even though he did denounce Stalin's ideas in his final writings.